So it's been revealed that the areas where Labour could build thousands of Greenbelt homes. We're going to read into this more from the exclusive from iNews, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an exclusive from iNews with the headline that has been revealed that the areas where Labour could build thousands of green-built homes. The exclusive reveals that half a million homes are set to be built on land around London, Birmingham and Manchester under Labour's house building plans. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. Now, just because uh, that, uh, the exclusive from I is saying this doesn't necessarily mean it's a guaranteed shoehorn that this happens. But obviously, as time will pass, yeah, we will see more and more some of the areas where it be. So it's entirely possible that this could be accurate. Uh, this is obviously their exclusive, obviously, of what they see. So they're showing here on this map here, regions outside London, Birmingham, and Manchester, but identified of having the largest areas to fit for the criteria for mass house buildings. So these are some of the areas that they look, you can see there where they possibly identified for them in Oldham, Walsall and Forrock there. Um, obviously, they should be, obviously, ground brown fields obviously should be prioritised, but obviously, uh, there has to be, obviously, concessions have to be made, and we do need uh, more homes, as you guys know. We already know that the situation we're in, and Labour just want to get get the shovels on the ground and start get to work as it possibly can. But obviously, everything all comes down to cost. They also want to incentivize private businesses to build homes as well. But it's also, as has been mentioned when we talk about homes as well, it's not just about building the homes. It's always about building affordable homes, homes that people can afford to live in. We obviously have a generation of people who cannot afford to buy homes because it's just too expensive as well. So this is obviously something that is a challenge as well. So it's all well and good at inviting private companies and biz, uh, private companies and investors to invest in the homes ourselves, guys. But it doesn't matter if people can't afford to buy these homes. So that's also a real factor to play into this. So let's read more read more into the areas where they plan on building them, ascent, uh, according to the eye here. So parts of Surrey, Oldham and Bronzegrove are areas with the highest parcel of green belt lands that are expected to be identified for new homes, a new, a major new analysis has revealed. So Labour's plans to redesign vast swathes of ugly sites on the green belt adds new so-called grey belt lands to deliver around half a million new homes around London and the South East, Manchester and North West and Birmingham and in the wider Midlands. But for the first time, I can reveal which local authorities have the largest number of sites that are likely to fall under the new grey belt designation and be developed for new housing. The analysis examined the green belt outside of London, Birmingham and Manchester, filtering out all the land that is deemed high quality, such as areas outstanding natural beauty, national parks, world heritage sites, ancient woodlands and other highly constrained sites. It will also remove all agricultural land that is not grade 4 or 5, which is classed as poor quality or very, and very poor quality. Land and focus on areas that are freehold and close to existing built-up areas, as these are likely, uh, likely sites to be developed first. So these are potentially green, potential grey belts here. So percentage of green belts as a percentage of local authority there for 14 uh, to 0 0.5, uh, 3,445 acres uh, in uh, Liverpool, Manchester area. There you got highlighted. So from deepest to the lightest, uh, the areas there you can see in Manchester, London. There, three thousand four hundred six acres, fourteen to zero point two. Again, obviously there. No, you can't see too much there really with the London one. It's very hard to see there. You might be able to see some in Birmingham, one thousand four hundred sixty one acres there. Obviously, um, it's a bit of deep, cut dark color there, but. Um, these are analysis reveals suburban areas around England's largest urban centres contain the most so-called grey belt lands there. In the case that the government is expected to identify the greatest number of grey belts outside of Manchester and London, with the Housing Secretary Angela Rayner's own constituency of Ashton and Light expected to see a large part of the green belt earmarked for development. The top five local authorities in the region, such as Oldenbury, Handenburg, Bolton and Townside, could provide nearly 200,000 new homes. Under the new planning regime, the analysis shows. In the southeast, it's found that two local authorities in Surrey, Surrey Heath and Tandon Ridge have the highest number of sites that are likely to fall in, into the Green Belt. Categories setting up with the, the battle with two Liberal Democrat-run councils. 
The likes of Bromsgrove, Rossall and Solihy have the greatest share of ugly green belt sites in West Midlands according to the analysis. A Labour source told the idea of prepared to challenge any opponents to the government's reforms to build more houses. We were elected with a mandate to build the homes Britain needs to make the tough choices to unblock the planning system and make it a reality, the source said. Labour introduced the idea of redefining Greenbelt land as part of its five golden rules for development. The other rules are developing on brownfield sites, ensuring 50% of new homes on these sites are affordable, boosting infrastructure and including green spaces. It comes as Ms Rayner is due to publish a new national planning policy framework, the N. FFP for consultation next week with the planning regime expected to be in place by the autumn. She is also expected to write to councils instructing them to renew their green belt boundaries to earmark brownville and so-called grey belt land in for development. But it is unclear whether the NPPF will set out a clear definition of what grey belt land it calls despite calls for clarity from the industry. Sam Strafford, planning director at Home Builders Federation, said we support the principle of grey belts as a way to prioritise where development can take place, but it is key that the government defines what it actually means. A proper definition would help avoid the opportunity for landowners to take advantage of subjugated terms such as poor quality or ugly by making uh, land uh, they wish to sell, uh, to sell fit for, ter- for sell fit their terms. Joe Davis, a principal of the real estate constituent uh, consultancy, Avison Young, said, Revisiting our Greenbelt politics is no longer is long overdue. It is widely recognised as a blunt tool which has stifled the ability for a positive plan for housing growth in locations in which the greatest is need and demand. The expectation of the NPPF revisions should not be about the opening of floodgates for house building across our countryside. It should be about fundamental soci- social what is that word? Shift towards a positive, sustainable planning landscape that allows collaboration between the public and private sector, working with communities, building on testing place and making principle on good town, in pra- uh, town planning practice. This stuff makes all uh, makes total sense here. Absolutely. You want you want to build homes. You, you don't want. Look, I get the, the you know, the premise of not in my backyard. I understand that. And peop- and I'm sure there is going to be some consultation on that, you know, but. These homes need to be built. Um, homes need to be built. But it, yeah, but it's not obviously just about just building any houses, specific ones, as we said earlier. But if we can do it with the public on side where the houses can be, great. But, you know, th- there's a lot of people who have too many, too many kicking up a fuss about it as well. Um, so this last bit here is where could homes be built on Greenbelt land? So London in the southeast, uh, Surrey Heath, 461 acres. Uh, Tandridge, 398 acres. Windsor and Maidenhead, 358 ag- acres. Central Bedfordshire, 340 acres. And Thurrock, 313 acres. In Manchester, Oldham has 1,424 acres. In Bury, 957 acres. Hindenburg, 870 acres. Bolton has 785 acres. Thameside, 759 acres. Birmingham has 518 acres. Walsall, 301 acres. Solihull, 298 acres. Newington and Bedworth 195 acres and Cannon Chase 160 acres. So plenty of opportunities in these areas definitely to build homes there. Interesting that uh, I don't know how much of Oldham there obviously looks like it's got the most there. Obviously you can see obviously on those numbers there that Manchester up north has the mo- has more acres than others. I'm, I'm, but I also say this as well is that it's all well and good building homes. But there needs to be the shops, there needs to be the jobs, there needs to be the opportunities, there needs to be the transport. You have to build all these things coinciding when you're building new homes, new neighbourhoods and whatnot. All these things must play a factor into building in these new homes. Um, schools, hospitals, all the basic public services that are provided that are needed to new homes. By building all this stuff alongside with it, you are creating jobs as well for those people in those areas as well. Because one thing is, well, well it's also rather well good as well, is that building the affordable homes is one thing, but having a job to be able to pay for that bill also matters as well. So it's also important about the kind of jobs that are going to be built around those areas or the jobs that are already there and how can or that jobs that are already there and how they can be expanded on so that more opportunities are created as well. So all these things need to be played into factors as well, not just obviously concessions and talking with communities and councils about where these homes can be built. All this stuff needs to play a factor into it as well. But what do you guys think about some of the areas that Labour could be targeting from this exclusive from I? Areas in London, Birmingham and Manchester. Let me know your thoughts about them and the more in the comments section down below. 
And if you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share us across social media so others are notified of this video. And subscribe, because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further, financially support me and the work that I do here, you could do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. Or join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.